All right, so here it is. The completed 29 inch Hasbro Millennium Falcon. <clears throat> if you're watching some of the videos to now, you've seen a lot of what's gone into building this. And at the same time with this finale, I'd like to give a little bit of a postmortem of some things that I would recommend to others who are considering building one of these. So first of all, um, the pros and cons for this is that definitely, um, I say one of the challenges behind building this is that everything you're doing here is pretty much instruction free. You're on your own. And uh, that's given a lot of people some creative license to do some things. You can get as crazy or as simple as you want to keep it, which is great. So it's built for all skill levels. If I were to do this again, I'm not sure that I would do another um, another toy conversion. I think I'd probably like to stick to um, an actual model itself. Um, from a cost perspective, I don't know what the difference would actually be. Taken from all the common uh, items that you would need, airbrush, paint, you know, uh, glue, all those things. Uh, the, even the electrical in some case, depending on how crazy you want to go. Um, you know, you're going to have to do either of those. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, ultimately some of where, the direction you want to take. So with this, the Falcon itself probably runs about a hundred bucks. Let's just round it up to that. You can maybe get a <clears throat> good deal someplace else. But these days the Falcon runs about a hundred bucks on eBay. And um, then the Shapeways components themselves, which I've only used Shapeways on this and I had a, a very good experience with them. I think that they make some great products. Um, they have great customer service and um, the Shapeways components on this probably ran me about close to $500, okay? There's one that I didn't use. I'll talk about that in the video. And then it's hard to say about the electrical, about how much that actually ran me at this point just because um, I had so much trial and error involved with that. So there's some, I've built a stockpile or an inventory of a lot of uh, lights and, and such. So to talk about the lights, let's start here. One of the things that I would definitely recommend against is buying the engine nozzles, okay? You can get people that are making the engine nozzles, Shapeway sells them as well. And one of the things that you can do with the engine nozzles is that you can fix them the way they go in here. I'll try and bring them up on screen to show you, but they would fit back here, okay? Underneath here. And then ultimately, um, they're cubes, which you have to build a housing for, and then you'd have to run them along here. And then those cubes would actually, um, they, they would prevent some light com from coming through. So a lot of what I've seen people do is something similar to this, where you're getting that real glow from the Falcon. Um, the engine nozzles would disturb that, okay? Take a look at the Force Awakens uh, Falcon. In some of the movie clips, you can probably see the engine nozzles, especially in the chase scene in the beginning. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so one of the other things I'll make mention about this on, as well is Interstellar Modeler had given some great advice on this. Now, it's this component here. It's unfortunate that you can see it, but it's also fortunate that I kept it. He had mentioned um, taking that out was a mistake for him and he, because he lost his, uh, his ability to close this up on the top. And he's absolutely right, and I'll explain why. Is underneath the hood here, if you use your imagination for a moment, there are four key supports back here, okay? When you put in the turbines, you lose one of your back ones. When you also cut away here, you're losing some of the ones along the, the side. So you're pretty much supportless all the way south of this turret right here, okay? You, you pretty much lost all your support. This is about the only one that you're going to have that's going to have a screw underneath that you can close this up. So it's instrumental that you keep that, okay? Very important. Um, so a couple other things was, um, you know, again, you know, shop around for some other components, some things that you can get. There's other people are doing some things. I know that uh, you can get some photo etched ones over here. As I mentioned in a previous video, these ones are actually movie accurate, okay? So if you look at the Empire Strikes Back, the uh, five-foot model that they have, they're very similar to what you're seeing here. I don't like the photo etched ones, but if you want to show the um, the turbines underneath, which I actually do, I actually do have the turbines underneath here. If you haven't seen that video, they do exist. Um, but if you want to reveal those and get the photo etched ones, you can see those. And then the, uh, the cockpit over here, that's one of the things that I did last, but at the same time, now looking back at it, having to have done that, that's one of the things I would have done first. So just so you understand how the wiring is working in here, is that there is a um, piece here that you're seeing that it's very difficult to see in, the, in this lighting. But basically I have wiring on the top and wiring on the bottom and there, there's a connector here that connects the two, okay? So that wire from the battery can get up to the, the top. And the, um, the cockpit 
and also the turret are going to be um, wired by the top and then the rest of the wiring in this is on the bottom component. Now one of the things that I didn't like about this model, or this toy rather, is the turret itself. On the top it looks fine, on the bottom there is no turret. The gun is like pasted into the, it's mold, it's crap. It's, it's not even, it, it doesn't even look anything like this. It's, so there's only, you only get one of these. If you really want to do a good job, and of course I didn't, but if you really want to do something that's you know professional and you want to get a better Falcon out of this, then what you need to do is you need to buy two of these products. So spend 200 bucks and then cut away the top turret from one and mount it on the bottom. And then you can actually put another turret well down there as well. Okay. So that's something that, you know, you have to consider when you, when you're buying that. I didn't do that. Um, another thing too, though, is, is that with this particular product, which I found a little bit disappointing in the end, um, again, it is what it is, uh, is the 27 screw holes that you have at the bottom to mount the to put the, the two components back together again, um, that's fine, but then now you have 27 holes underneath there. And when you turn it over and you look at it, you're like, oh gosh, that's, that kind of sucks. So that's why I kind of just, you know, I don't, I, you know, again, it's fine. It is what it is, but at the same time, if you're looking for something that's really, if you're gonna put this much work into something, you might want to consider doing a model. If you can light the, the, this the same way, um, then at least you can get uh, less of those imperfections along the way. Something to consider. Um, what else can I say about this? The I did the, as you've seen in some of the earlier videos, I did the, um, the aircraft enamel paints, the aircraft gray, uh, the tester's aircraft gray, and then I used the Vallejo um, pigments on this, and that's what gives it that whole dirty look. Uh, some of the streaking is from uh, oil paints, I believe, and then the other streaking is a lot of it, as you're seeing there, from the actual um, Vallejo um, pigments. Now, one of the things I will mention to you is that if you're doing the pigments as an example, and I really, like you, you probably saw this in the previous one, I just went to town. I just dusted the entire thing with pigments, um, and then I used some of the more you know, different colors to get the streaking and whatnot. But as I was going to say, one of the most important things about those pigments is when I was done, I dull coated the entire thing with the tester's dull coat. Shake it well and keep your distance, okay? In some cases, I got a little bit too close and it started to give me this bubbling effect. And in some areas, I actually went ahead and repainted. Um, but in other ones, I left it alone. And I think down over here is a good example. If you can see that, that bubbling may be taking place right there. It's a little bit difficult to see on the camera, but definitely if you're up close with the naked eye, you can see it. Another thing I really speak highly of is the... Um, I got the tester's weathering kit, okay, very, very nice. I, put, I chose the one that had the silver components, so you can see here that the silver turns out very, very nice, and also the one, it comes with rust as well, so, you know, two things you can really benefit from within here, and I think they look very, very good. So, very happy with that. And then I'm trying to think of what else I can share with you over here. Uh, mount everything inside very well, okay? You saw in one of my previous videos the size of the battery. And the battery itself um, is pretty big. It's probably about the same size as, you know, this, this, these vents, these six vents. I use double-sided foam tape, and I put that at the very bottom. And that way, so when I have to turn the thing upside down, you know, I'm not getting any of the, uh, I'm not getting any of the parts moving around. So make sure that everything is secured very good. The other thing I did want to mention over here was for the, the vents themselves. Um, what I did was I just used the vent, and then I took some clear plastic, put it back there, and I used a um, barrel sander on my Dremel tool and I frosted it, okay? And then what I did was I painted it blue. And it's very hard to see when it's turned off that it's painted blue, but you do get that, that little aura of blue that's coming through there, very nice. And if you didn't see one of the earlier videos, back here I, I kept the piece that I cut out and I planted it back here. I had that same curvature and I used the lights on it, okay? So I used a strip of uh, LED lights uh, mounted on some foam core back there and it just blasts out. So yeah, that's, um, this was definitely a learning experience. It was fun. And uh, what I really felt was really unique about this was this is one product that everybody can build and make their own because there's no, like I said, set of instructions to do this. Um, I've been wanting to make these videos to sort of just give back to those who have been helping me 
and uh, share some of those do's and don'ts and let people come up with their own ideas. But definitely, if you want to make something from scratch that's your own, um, this is this is definitely uh, something that you you can start with. It's very easy to build, and, and you can choose how complex or how simple you want to make it. So definitely uh, recommend that. Um, and, and again, you know, if, if you're more instruction-based or you want to get something that's more movie accurate and not have to figure a lot of things out, consider some of the models. You know, so those, um, those are two different directions you can go. So I just want to thank everybody for following the channel and, uh, and watching the build, and hopefully you've been able to take something away from this. And um, I'll leave you with one of the end photos that I did from a photo shoot with this particular Falcon. Feel free to uh, follow me on Facebook um, or go ahead and uh, write me an email if you want. You can reach me at kenpearsonphotography.com. And uh, also uh, leave some comments down below. I'll be happy to share any info I can and answer any questions you may have. Thanks very much, guys. Happy building. Mm -hmm.